I want to thank everybody for coming in tonight uh, for our community engagement meeting with the superintendent and myself. Uh, as everybody knows, our meeting tonight deals with safety and security in the schools. And so I'm going to do a little presentation first, and then I'm going to hand things over to the superintendent for any questions, and he's going to add anything to the, to the discussion that he wants to. Uh, but first, let's look at our goals. When Dr. Wilson came into office, one of his top priorities was safety. Um, and when we begin to talk about safety, we begin to talk about those things that we wanted to make safe. Uh, and so as we talked, we decided that those things needed to be the classrooms. We needed to make sure they were secure. We needed to make sure that the buildings were secure. We needed to make sure that pupil transportation was secure. We needed to make sure that the campuses themselves were secure. Um, and we, we wanted to make sure that when students come to school in the Pickens County School District, that they feel safe. And we're going to look at some data to decide on whether or not students feel safe. And that data that we're going to look at are school climate surveys. We're also going to look at referrals to the office uh, for specific disciplinary issues such as defiance and willful refusal. Uh, we're going to look at disrespect to teacher staff. We're going to look at classroom disruptions, not following class rules or teacher directions, things like verbal aggression. And our goal with looking at those disciplinary categories was to also address the issue of bullying. As a lot of you know, toward the end of the last school year, we had a pretty serious issue with bullying. Um, and so as a part of our safety protocols, one of our goals, of course, should be to make sure that the students feel safe among their own population inside the buildings. And so how are we gonna determine whether or not what we're doing is effective? Uh, well, one thing that we have noticed when we look at the Georgia Student Health Surveys from 2017 and 2018, we see an interesting trend. And that trend is, oddly enough, as students progress through the grade levels in the Pickens County school system, they begin to feel less safe. Kindergartners, first graders, second, third graders, they tend to respond very positively and it actually has gone up uh, in terms of safety. Middle schoolers feel less safe, high schoolers feel even less safe. Um, and so we need to target those areas and we need to make sure that all of our students feel safe when they come to school. There's been several people that I need to thank and the superintendent would like to thank as well that came together to help us with this. And you'll notice up there that I've actually got our planning teams divided up into two groups. Those first goals that I talked to you about, they're more external, the buildings, the campus, the transportation and for external safety we've relied on a number of experts if you want to call them that uh, we we've dealt with our district and building administrators we've involved our board attorney in our protocols we've involved sheriff donnie craig uh, chief deputy jeff hall fire chief elrod we've even had 911 representatives take part in our discussions on how to make our schools externally more safe the internal team is a little bit different. Well, the internal safety team includes the superintendent, myself, the assistant superintendent, our mindset trainers, and I'm gonna get into mindset training a little bit more in a couple of slides, our building administrators themselves, and we incorporated the special education director into this as well. And so let's look at the data. You'll notice up there we've got data tracking back to the 14-15 school year and we've got two categories. The first category up there are office referrals. Those are referrals that are serious and offense. Those are referrals that a teacher filled forms out, has sent that student to the office. Uh, those, are, those are a little more serious. The minor referrals are the ones that are documented in educator's handbook that the administrators will deal with at some point. They're not pressing issues, but they are issues that need to be looked at. Now you'll notice some trends there when we look at that data from 14-15 up through the current school year. You'll notice that office referrals, the more serious offenses, has been climbing. In 14-15 we had 2,383. Last school year we had 3,878. And in parentheses up there you'll see I went ahead and extrapolated the data out. If the trend holds true up to this point, we've got 1269. If that trend holds, we will have just over 3,800 office referrals for those discipline categories that I identified in the previous slide. Minor referrals, you can see that minor referrals have been declining, but you'll also notice from extrapolating the data out for 1819 that they are actually going to jump considerably uh, at up to 4839. So, our trends are either on office referrals are holding steady and minor referrals are actually going to increase quite a bit. So we need to, 
we need to look at ways to deal with these issues, and that's where mindset comes in. Some of you may be familiar with Mindset. Mindset historically has been a special ed program that deals with de-escalation first. Secondly, deals with restraint. Now we're not going to incorporate the restraint parts of, of Mindset training into what we're doing here, but we do like the concepts that Mindset teaches in terms of de-escalation and communication. Those are types of things that work regardless of the classroom. It does not have to be a special ed student or a teacher to learn how to treat someone with respect, to encourage communication and those types of things. And so the big push in the Pickens County School District this year to deal with our internal threats is to incorporate mindset training throughout the district. There you can see, again, the district discipline data broken down by those categories that I listed. You can see over there those numbers extrapolated out and you can see there's been a steady increase possibly going to be a decline in some of the categories this year, but we, we have been increasing. And so our strategy, let's look at mindset first. Let's talk about the internal. Like I just said, Pickens County School District has initiated the behavioral aspects of mind, <coughs> mindset training throughout the district. Mindset trainers have been hired and are contracted with us now and are currently working with our staff in every school system. They're working with Every person that can have contact with another person uh, is being trained in mindset, from our front office staff, to our nurses, uh, to our administrators, to our teachers, to our paras. Everyone needs to know good communication skills. Everyone needs to know what mindset calls pass. And these are the, the things that we're gonna live by moving forward in our communications with students. We're gonna promote choice and trust. All communication needs to work from a position of trust. All communication needs to work from a position of choice. Teachers need to be encouraging choice and trust. We're going to avoid power struggles. A lot of these discipline issues that we talked about, the root of these things can be found in the power struggles that exist inside the classrooms, either between students or unfortunately sometimes between teachers and students. So we need to stay away from those. We need to be proactive and not reactive. And lastly, we need to set everybody up for success. Pass is kind of one of those slogans that mindset revolves around. Another slogan that mindset revolves around that we've been preaching to the kids, and this one is kind of neat. Another slogan that we have is dragons stay in their car. And car means calm, alert, and respectful. And to encourage and to get that message out last month, we had a art competition in every school, and you can see all of our submissions, these are the artwork that won the competitions. Uh, and you can see there's Tate's, and you can see Harmonies, you can see Hill Cities, you can see Jasper Middle Schools, you can see Pickens High Schools. All of the kids participated in the program, winners were selected, and our goal now, once we are able to line up the funding, is to get every kid in every school a t-shirt that has their school's specific logo on it. So we're trying to encourage among the kids to calm, alert, and respectful. And now the external. Let's talk about those things that we're doing outside of the buildings to try to make sure that they're safe as well. One of the things that we've done already this year, and they actually are now, I, I think at this point in time, should be at 100%, that is our classroom cameras. Every classroom in Pickens County School System has classroom cameras. Now, first and foremost, I'll go ahead and tell you, these, these camera systems, first and foremost, are educational. We're hoping that the teachers are using these to record lessons, to record themselves teaching, educational purposes. Every teacher, you may have noticed, if you've been in any of the schools, you may notice that the teachers are wearing around their necks a microphone so that their voices are projected more effectively in the classroom. That, too, helps with, with communication. But a, another advantage of having these cameras in the classroom, of course, is security. Every one of those teachers that's wearing a microphone around their neck, every one of those microphones has a panic button. Anytime there is an issue that a teacher is having, either outside of the classroom or inside their classroom, all they have to do is hit the panic button. The office will be notified of the location of the panic. The camera will be turned on to full 360. Teachers can actually control what the camera's viewing. Teachers can actually set it to view themselves teaching in front of the classroom or they can, they can move that. When you click the panic button, that camera goes to full 360. 
that image that, that is being recorded by that camera is also available to 911. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that too later on. So that's an important security issue that, that is also an educational issue. Superintendent has also made a concerted effort to secure every one of our buildings. This was a top priority of his, and you'll notice a lot of people are wearing around now card readers. We have tried to secure the entrances to all of the schools with card readers. Some of them have been easier to do than others. All of them will be done eventually uh, so that the days of propping doors open and people flowing in and out of outside of buildings, those days are over. As a part of that, the superintendent has also made a concerted effort to make sure that all classes are inside the building so that students are not going outside of those buildings to attend classes. Probably the best example of that is Pickens High School. For those of you that are familiar with the high school or have a student down there, you know that for in the past, for weight training, for example, uh, and the two trailers in the back, students have actually gone outside the building. All of those classes are inside now, with the exception of the Ag Barn. And it's, it's, we haven't got the pigs to agree to come inside yet, but, but when they do, we'll, we'll do that as well. Let's talk about transportation security. Another big purchase that we have made with Splash Money is a communication system. And it is state of the art, it is digital. Every school bus is gonna be equipped with this system so that it can communicate directly back. Every school bus is going to be uh, install a GPS locator so that we can instantly see the location of the school bus. Every school bus is going to have a panic button installed so that if the bus driver holds that button or anyone on that bus holds that button down for two seconds, it is going to immediately light up 911 the bus's location is going to be transmitted and the Sheriff's Department and the Pickens County School District can respond immediately. And that's a major advancement. Not only are the buses provided with those, but all of our administrators and all of our buildings are also going to have these radios and all of the radios have the capability of being patched directly into the Sheriff's radios. So if we need to have the ability to communicate with the Sheriff's Department at any time, all of our administrators, all of our buses, all of our district people have the ability to communicate back and forth instantly without going through any, any issues with that. Those communications are also packed directly into 911. So if anyone hits the panic channel on their radio at any school, it will immediately light up 911. It will light up the Sheriff's Department. Our radios will be notified 911 will immediately, in 911, we've already got it in there, in 911 will be access to the cameras in the school where the panic button has been pressed. So the 911 operator can actually see video inside that building of whatever is going on and communicate with the Sheriff's Department. That's huge. I don't know of any other school system in the state of Georgia that has that capability. Another thing that we did, we, uh, the superintendent called it the guard shack initially, and some people, some people were not happy with that on Facebook, so we changed its name. It's the Welcome Center now. Uh, that is the entrance to Pickens High School. Most of you probably in this room have seen that thing uh, since its construction. Uh, we now have a Welcome Center that regulates all traffic in, in and out of the high school. And people all the time ask, well, how many people did you have going into the high school that didn't need to be in there? We don't know. There was no way to know prior to the construction of this thing, but I can tell you this, that in the first two weeks that the Welcome Center was manned this school year, 14 people came to the top of the hill, saw the Welcome Center, back to the turnaround, and left. I don't know what they were coming on campus to do, uh, but they decided they did not want to come past the Welcome Center, and so that's big. Another thing that we had done inside that Welcome Center, which is manned at all times during the school day, is also access to the cameras inside the building. And so we have another level of communication there. If there ever is an instance where the Sheriff's Department needs to respond, this person can also help to identify to the Sheriff's Department what is going on inside the building and where those issues are. Communication is key anytime something like this happens. Uh, and so that's another big thing that we have done. <clears throat> and we're not finished. A lot of you are probably familiar with it, and the superintendent has mentioned already, but I'll go ahead and tell you again, just to remind you, Pickens Junior High School is undergoing major renovations. We're gonna, 
We're hoping to break ground. We just met with the architects earlier today. We're hoping to break ground sometime in the spring. Our goal ultimately is to not only renovate Pickens Junior High School, but to enclose that facility. That's our goal, uh, to get that facility. And those of you, you've all probably been to Pickens Junior High School, have students that have attended there. It's an open campus, um, and so we're gonna do something about that. <clears throat> All of our schools, I said Pickens High School because that's the first one the Sheriff's Department wants to deal with, but all of our schools, with the assistance of Pickens County Sheriff's Department, all of our schools that they feel need it will be renumbered. Uh, we've had Chief Hall and the Sheriff have told us in the past that especially Pickens High School is an absolute nightmare. If anything ever happens and they go down there, they're going to have no idea how to get where they need to go. The numbering is confusing. The layout of the building is confusing. And so our goal there is uh, this school year to working with the sheriff and working with Chief Hall, we are going to go through Pickens High School and get them to help us number and label clearly uh, the halls and the doors, all of the parts of the school that they need to be familiar with so that they will know where a situation is occurring and there won't be that downtime as they try to figure out where and how. And we'll do that with all the schools, any of the schools that they feel that is needed. And we're also going back to our camera system. Once they have renumbered our schools for us, we're going to renumber our cameras. So that what the, the, the building number says, the camera they have access to is going to say as well. So that's going to speed up if anything happens. Safety training. We have already had our first session with every faculty and para and front office personnel in the, in the school. They've already had their first meeting with Jeff Hall. He has introduced them to the training uh, that they're going to go through. The second level of that training, believe it or not, and, and, and we're really lucky to have a sheriff's department that we have. I'll go ahead and throw that out there. Uh, the next phase of that training is going to include Chief Deputy Jeff Hall coming to each school this school year and going to each teacher in their classroom during their planning period and talking to them in their classroom about how they can make their classroom safe in the event that something happens, ways that they can escape that classroom if it's necessary, ways to barricade in that classroom if it's necessary. He is going to go to every classroom in the Pickens County School District and speak to every teacher. Now that's huge. We also are going to incorporate that safety training into all of our substitute teacher training so that hopefully our goal there is that if anything ever does happen, we will never be in a situation where the person in front of that class of, of students does not know what to do. So that's, that's huge. Community collaboration, I've already mentioned it. That's picture. Um, nothing's going on at the high school. There's no reason to panic, but you'll notice there's the sheriff's department. There's the city police, there's the Georgia State Patrol. We have been using Pickens High School for active shooter training. We've opened the building up to the Sheriff's Department. They have invited all of these other organizations into the building and they have actually, and they did it over our last break and they're gonna do it two more times this school year. They have actually had training inside our buildings, specific to our buildings, uh, where they have gone through uh, and done some scenarios and, and tried to prepare as best that they could. They're gonna do that two more times this year. I think that's awesome. Uh, we also are very fortunate that the Sheriff and Chief Hall are willing to give us every month time to have a meeting where we continue to discuss security, ways to make our buildings safer, things that we need to be doing, um, and, and so we're, we're really lucky to have the people that we do. And so having said that, I'm going to be quiet, and I'm gonna turn the meeting over to the person I know everyone is here to hear, and that is Superintendent Carlton Wilson.